first time in Jersey and it's really beautiful um, and it's great to see such uh, an active and involved financial services industry here on the island. So excited to talk to you today about how we're creating innovation ecosystems in financial services at HSBC. I'll start off with a bit about our journey in moving towards being a, a digitally led bank. Um, and then go through some examples of, of why we think that collaboration and ecosystems are really at the heart of that with specific, specific examples of some of the pilots that, that we've been running as well. How many people here are already using mobile banking? Good, the, the majority for sure. How many people know what open banking is and are familiar with those concepts? Okay, quite a bit. So. Um, a very digitally first audience, and then that's also what we're finding with our customer base. So in the UK, already over 90% of our touch points with customers are digital. Globally, 80% of our banking transactions are already made um, in a digital platform. So, so we're already seeing that shift into this very much mobile first ecosystem. Um, where people are wanting to have the same type of personalized, intuitive, and simplified journeys with their finances as they would expect and have started to expect already with the number of apps that we already use throughout our daily lives today. So for, for us as a bank, that's really looking at how do we create mobile-first, mobile-driven interactions with our customers and have those powered by our people. Um, because it's really that interaction with the people that, that gives us the ability to support our customers in that real way when that support is needed, but to be able to provide the 24-hour and anywhere, everywhere banking that, that we've come to expect um, through our interactions today. And really at, at the heart of this, looking at mobile um, experiences and mobile banking and what that means, it's about moving from the reactive to a proactive, personal, and, and real-time experience. Now, money is a, a stressful topic for a lot of people, and, and we almost want it to be done by someone else or, or done instantly and not have to spend too much time thinking about it. And, and this is where we're finding that in the digital world, we can help our customers in this way and to provide those types of insights and support that they need when they need it. Leveraging here the amount of data that's available in the marketplace today, the um, technologies like advanced analytics, machine learning, which Terry will speak to um, in his talk after me, and I'm sure go in more detail there. But what we're able to do with the amount of data through initiatives like open banking and from having the customer touch points be online is to provide this type of support and interaction that <coughs> tailors around their lives versus a product siloed um, view of financial services as it was in the past. So here this could be, and, and with the customer's consent for that use of data being at the heart of it, um, allowing them to receive insights that pop up and to be able to have offers that are completely tailored to those individuals directly within their mobile app and to have that speed of interaction that we experience in the other applications that we're using. Now, a big part of this journey for the financial in services industry as a whole has been to learn from a lot of the digital first brands that are already out there in the market. And we've seen this happen to a lot of other industries, and now is really a time that we're finding the financial services industry supported by new regulation and supported by how customers are expecting and, and working with their finances and the fintechs in the market to really be uh, API driven. 
This is something we've seen in the travel industry, so Expedia, for example, replacing travel agents, the taxi industry, and Uber. These are all shifts where, through the use of APIs, we're able to have on-demand market connectivity, we're able to integrate with other offerings, and to have mobile-first experiences as well. I think one of the, the most interesting brands, arguably, for a lot of people will be Amazon and some of the strategies and how they've really pioneered this thinking. So I don't know if any of you know about the memo that Jeff Bezos sent 15 years ago around APIs. Yes? No? Some of you might be familiar, and it's available online if you search it, but Jeff Bezos sent, and this is what it's said to be, um, 15 years ago, a memo that said that every one of his teams would need to interact with each other through APIs, and this is essentially the, the connectors to allow for data, and that those APIs should be designed from the, from the beginning to be externally exposed. And there, it really shows the thinking of how that can create the efficiencies not only within the organization, but this idea of designing for a world in which you're interacting quite seamlessly with other parties in the ecosystem, be those fintechs, startups, and initiatives like open banking. And we've seen that drive out as well now in these patterns where we're understanding the importance of APIs in creating those seamless experiences in making even our own um, operations quicker and easier to do, and then in turn, that allows us to operate with the external ecosystem. And bringing me on this topic, now, the power of ecosystems that we're referring to here is initially those in, in the startup space and, and looking at how we can really build and leverage a developer community and how these these connectivities through initiatives like developer portals and, and really led by open banking are enabling us to not only serve a much broader um, distribution base by working in these collaborative partnerships, um, but also attract people to build directly on top of us in order to power the innovation that we need in the market. So this is something that I think is an interesting trend in the market overall, highlighted by the fact that Microsoft have now bought GitHub. And are people familiar with, I see some nods. So GitHub being a platform where developers can um, share code and work simultaneously and collaboratively on code bases. And it, it signals to us that there's a lot of interest in the broader market to look at developers as a new set of customers. So when we have our retail and commercial, we also now are also speaking to this new audience of developers who can build on top of us. And this allows us to not only interact with the partners that, that we traditionally would, and it also allows us to allow them to self-serve and to build on top of our offerings. And this powers innovation by distributing the innovation broader across the marketplace. We're also, in terms of ecosystems, creating customer ecosystems for innovation. And this is around creating tools where customers can give us our feedback and can pilot and test some of the new features that we're considering in real time, give us our feed their feedback in real time, and really help us to drive the innovation that they need, the, the services and um, offerings that they feel will, will also support their lives. So really, the key focus for us in our innovation team is innovation via collaboration. And being a global brand and being able to see the innovation that's happening in financial services across markets around the world is really supporting this. Um, we have currently over 100 um, fintech partnerships that are happening around the world, and we continue to look for new ways to collaborate both with the most innovative startups as well as some of the bigger tech brands. Um, and currently, we are working with brands including Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and really looking at how together we can build on the strengths of a bank with over 150 years of banking experience, and then learning also from these startups, whether they're the, the most innovative smaller companies or the broader digital brands that also have a lot to bring to the table. So really, we find that 
that this collaboration allows us to speed up a lot of the, the innovation that we would see and, and test and learn in real time in a variety of markets and at a speed that we might not be able to achieve on our own. So I just want to walk you through one of the examples of what we've been testing and learning and sort of this journey as we go from an initial POC to a, a product that's now live in the market. So a couple of years ago, we started with a pilot called Nudge. And here we wanted to see how using behavioral science we could help to nudge customers. Really, a lot of our exploration with digital is how can we use technology to help make it easier for people to manage their money, to help make it more intuitive, and increasingly as well to help them build their own financial capabilities, which is part of our sustainab sustainability strategy, um, so that they, they can understand and be learning and building those skills while they use um, our products and services. So with Nudge, we, we tested the various types of rules and tricks and sort of a gamification in, to understand directly from customers what would help them to increase their savings over time. From the success of that initial Nudge pilot, we then partnered with a fintech called Parity. We were the first large bank to um, participate within the FCA sandbox environment. So there was a number of advantages to doing that, not least to make our own internal culture and, and mindset adapt and, and understand what it's like to be testing a new feature in real time and at a much um, quicker time span than would previously be possible. So, th so that's certainly one benefit as well as having that direct connectivity to the regulator and making sure that they're also comfortable with some of the, the new messages that we would be testing and this type of gamification, which, which was quite new for the overall market at the time as well. And we found with SmartSave, people were able to, to set their own rules around how they wanted to try to save. So for example, there was a number of people that wanted to penalize themselves whenever they ate fast food. When I go to McDonald's, that means that I have to save a bit of money. Um, other people prefer to just have an automated savings that, that pulls out some micro savings um, every month using smart algorithms to make sure that you're never saving more than you can afford. And with the Smart Save app, we found that in general, people were saving up to 30% more and, and that those savings continued for a long time. So this was really one of our first forays and able to do that at speed through working through a fintech partnership to understand what are the types of tips and digital tools that we can build to really help people achieve positive financial outcomes. Those learnings we've then translated into our new Connected Money app. And Connected Money we is our, one of our open banking propositions where we are allowing customers to have a view of all of their financial services accounts, including their mortgage accounts, their cards. And really that provides a, what we call joined up banking, a holistic financial picture so that you don't have to be logging into your different accounts and doing manual calculations to understand where does your balance stand at the end of the month. Um, one of the tools there is balance after bills. So the, using the data from your previous transactions, we understand what are the reoccurring payments, adjusting that and, and marking out which of those are regular occurring bills, and that happens automatically for you in the background. You can also adjust that as you need to be able to see that given that expenditure, how you would stand at the end of the month and, and really know where you're placed. And there we'll also be integrating some of the, the learnings that we took from the Smart Save and Nudge pilots to again, continue to provide people with the types of hints and tips and, and insights around their own money. And what's really um, fantastic about open banking here is that you really do have that holistic financial view available for you in order to, to make it just simpler and easier for, for you to understand where you stand financially. We've done a, a similar but slightly different pilot with our first direct brand. This was in collaboration with a fintech called Bud. Bud were one of the winners from the Accenture Innovation Lab, which is one of our partners. Um, they have annual um, startup competitions and we work with a number of the startups that are coming out of that and, and that's a partnership that then helps us to create those collaboration opportunities with fintechs. 
So with the first direct uh, partnership, which is called Arthur, we again um, decided to participate in the FCA sandbox. And here we were testing something that's quite new for, for a large <laughs> bank and, and with this open banking model of not only offering products from HSBC or from First Direct or from our own brands, but also offering customers products from other brands, from fintechs, for example, like Wealthify. And here we're testing out how people feel about being offered that type of choice within one central hub, as well as looking at becoming the center of those types of relationships for customers so that at the end of the day, we're able to also provide them with tips outside of standard financial services products, but feed them that information that will help them to as well save money and to improve their finances. So one example of that would be energy switching. If we know your postcode, and we can see that the people that are living around you are spending a lot less on their energy bills, to be able to, within the app, suggest to you, maybe you want to consider um, switching providers and to have that functionality directly embedded within the app as well. So that's something that, that we continue uh, to test and build out. We also allow you to invite non-customers into that app in order to have a joined up view of your finances and to create goals. So say you have a roommate and you need to split the bills with them or you're saving up together for a particular trip. They don't happen to be a first direct customer. They can also come in that app and be able to have that shared view as well. So as we move into the future, this is really remaining our focus is to be mobile first, to leverage these new technologies in combination with the changing customer expectations and working in collaboration with both small and large technology companies to participate in an ecosystem that will be increasingly platform based and where innovation is really coming up from across the entire spectrum. And that's something that we want to encourage and be part of and to support in order to help people access the services that they need, where they need it, and when they need it. And to stimulate sort of collaborative innovation, working with companies that will then be able to build on top of us and service this longer tail rather than the traditional customer segments which may have been focused on through these technology tools, through these collaborative partnerships, we're able to reach a much wider customer base and create innovations that, that one company alone would, would not have been able to do. So thank you.